One of the biggest mysteries in entertainment history is the end of the Beatles. As everyone knows, the Beatles were arguably the biggest band of the 20th century. But they were largely broken up because John Lennon started dating a strange woman named Yoko Ono, who messed up their recording sessions with Lennon's help and eventually made him leave the group entirely. There's a lot to this situation and people have wondered about how something that was so huge and worth so much to so many people could have been stopped by something so mundane. And many parts of the situation don't add up. The Beatles were always a group that made great music, and John Lennon himself actually called avant-garde art a pile of BS, before starting to relentlessly make avant-garde music with Yoko Ono that no one else liked. Likewise, Yoko Ono herself was similar to many modern artists who make things that they themselves wouldn't buy as music or art. Why would she want to do that and ruin the Beatles' music when it was key to her own husband's income? And at the same time, many great artists have fallen in love and actually made some of their greatest work. Why did Lennon go the other way, to the point that it ended one of the greatest bands of all time? Hold your nose, because we're going deep. A lot of people have wondered about this situation, including the Beatles themselves. And the first answer is that it was somehow related to Lennon's romance with Yoko Ono. She used to sit in on the recording sessions, but looking back on it, you think the guy was totally in love with her. But if you think about it, that doesn't really tell us anything. Love itself isn't a well-defined word, and our only understanding of it, in this case, is that it floods people's brains and makes them do strange things. But in many cases, love has been a great help to art. Beethoven, for example, wrote some of his best work as a tribute to women he was in love with. So there's a lot more going on in these reactions than we can just dismiss with a poetic phrase. And when we get into it, there are actually multiple ways that our romantic feelings can work on our brain. The first thing we need to know is that love and romance, among other things, give us an obsessive desire to get closer to the person we love. The key, in most cases, is that artists who do great work in the name of love do it because their art offers a way to achieve that closeness. Beethoven, for example, was in love with several women, but unable to actually form a relationship with them. Even when they loved him back, they couldn't accept him because he wasn't a nobleman. So in Beethoven's mind, creating great music was a way of not only wooing those women, but raising his own reputation, so he could have a chance to be with them. Thus, all the feelings he used and could create with that music were amplified. John Lennon, on the other hand, was in a totally different situation. He met Yoko Ono after the Beatles were already successful, when he attended a modern art show where she happened to be showing some of her work. And someone like Lennon, who everyone treated like a god, got a sense of value from the fact that Yoko Ono didn't know who he was, which was very rare for him and is known to greatly increase someone's attraction. They started dating after that, and as a result, Lennon developed romantic feelings for someone who actually had no interest at all in his music. It played no role in deepening their relationship, but participating in all the weird artsy things she wanted to do did deepen their relationship. And this brings us to our first big question, because John Lennon was a very smart person, and he actually hated avant-garde art, like a lot of people do. So how did he end up turning his own music into that very thing? Number eight. Uh. Number eight. Uh. This is where we get into that first aspect of how creative people's minds actually work. Because musicians, like other artists, judge the quality of their work by the emotional reaction they have to it. But, like we talk about here, our emotional reactions take in far more than just what our work itself may cause us to feel. And this played a huge part in how Lennon changed. Because among other things, music plays on emotions that come from us increasing our level of certainty and comfort in the world. That same level of certainty and comfort, when we're in love, gets increased by us deepening our connection to the person we love. And it does so in an incredibly powerful way since so many of our feelings are geared towards having children. As a result, things which increase the closeness of our relationship hit the same triggers in our mind that the structure of a good piece of music would. And this is exactly what happened to John Lennon. And it happened even more than normal, because Yoko Ono was in the studio while he was working. In some ways, that's like trying to drive when the sun is in your face. There's so much extra light hitting your eyes that you can't see in the way you normally would. So his reactions to what he heard were totally different from the audience and from anyone else he worked with. 
But this shows us another thing. Because as we said, Lenin, like a lot of people, really didn't like abstract art. But we can see here that those opinions are based on the context in which we take those things in. So the same art that one person finds to be awful, another person, or even that same person, can suddenly love if things change. And that brings us to the other side of this, which is Yoko Ono herself. She was known for doing bizarre displays in the name of art, and in many ways she represents a lot of other people who make seemingly meaningless or even negative decisions in their writing, painting, music, or other creative work. Very often, these same people buy popular art just like the rest of us, but they themselves create art that has nothing to do with that. And Yoko Ono took it to the point that she deliberately messed up her own husband's work, which was how they made a living. So how could that happen? Well, like we said, Lenin himself got pleasure out of deepening his relationship with Yoko Ono. But Yoko Ono and people like her don't see art as a way of expressing their feelings or stimulating feelings in others. They see art as a performance, a way of getting attention. So they get social status out of acting strangely, which triggers the same pleasurable feeling in their brain as improving their relationship with their love interest, or the same pleasurable feeling that normal artists get from making things that others enjoy and which naturally increases their reputation. So, because art for people like that is about getting people to look at them, they draw pleasure not from making things that other people enjoy, but from making things that are different from the art they normally see. So they're liable to do anything and feel like it's great work, as long as it's weird. Now in a lot of cases, these same artists are only familiar with popular art in their field. And so, they just do things that are different from what's in the stores or galleries. And they grow out of it when they see other avant-garde artists who also do meaningless things, which makes them no longer feel unique or get the same attention. But in other cases, they may not be in those artistic circles and always stay the same. But as long as they get pleasure out of being different instead of being good, you'll see the same thing. On the other hand, I do want to point out that this is just one part of a whole. Because that pleasure of increasing our reputation can come from other things too, which can have the same effect. And there are actually several other types of pleasurable feelings we could have, which come from specific parts of music and which can be replaced in the musician's mind by other things that might be happening to them. Or replaced in our minds as the audience, making us like songs that, in terms of music fundamentals, shouldn't work at all. And this works in the same way we've talked about with movies and books. And it turns out you can actually chart these things, not just with movies and books and music, but the other forms of art too, like painting and games. I've been working on that now, and I've even got a few of them figured out. And it can really transform our perspective on how all these things work. We will keep talking about that here. Check me out on Patreon or contact me if you're interested in having me look at something you've written yourself. Both are great ways to support the channel. And as always, Thanks for your time.